Hi, and welcome to Brems to Puzzles, and welcome back to the Sudoku Takeout series. This is pack four, which is the trivalent Sudoku pack, which is our anti-diagonal pack. And now we're getting into the puzzles that the testers all rated as hard. Um, these puzzles have some tricks in them that may not be uh, obvious at the beginning. I reckon the previous part puzzle could have fallen into that category, but I think these ones are definitely kicking up a bit. This is Slipped Disc by Bremster, and this is the puzzle that uses the, the thermo constraint. And uh, again, I really hope you're enjoying these ones. I'm looking forward to seeing the comments when these puzzles finally come out. Um, so, of course, there'll be a link below to where you can try this puzzle yourself, as well as to the entire pack where you can download it. Um, but let's have a look um, at the rules. So what we have is normal Sudoku rules apply. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits one to nine must be placed without repetition. We have the anti-diagonal, which means along these main diagonals, um, each of them may only contain three distinct digits. So um, uh, yeah, on each of these, three different digits only may be placed on the diagonals. That's the rules. And thermo, so digits on gray thermometers must increase from the bulb to the tip. So this digit must be higher than this, this digit must be higher than this, this digit must be higher than this, and this digit must be higher than this. They must always increase as they go up. Not a lot of given digits, not a lot of long thermos, so, or not very long thermos. So they're the rules of the puzzle. Um, uh, one of the things I do want to call out is this pack is being provided. I mean, it's provided on YouTube videos and watching the video is always a support. Um, but uh, but of um, we provide these packs as a pay what you want um, through my coffee uh, Kofi page. Um, if you wish to support, um, then we think a couple of bucks for 12 puzzles is very, very nice value. Um, zero is perfectly fine. I'm going to continue to provide these for free. Um, but if you um, do want to... Um, support the packs even if you only want to kick in a couple of bucks every third or fourth pack that would be really appreciated anyone who thinks that donating more than five dollars is probably a bit crazy unless you want to donate like five dollars for every five packs or something then that's perfectly fine um let's restart the puzzle to restart my timer let's give this a shot so there's a couple of tricks to this that um I want to go through because this is a puzzle. You can do this with a little bit of coloring. I don't want to start by, you can do some pencil marking on these thermos to limit the digits um, and restrict them quite a bit. But I want to go into the concepts of this puzzle first, such as this digit here. Let's mark it. And where um, it must be one of these three digits, but it can't be on its own thermo because this must be higher than both of those digits. So this digit must be that digit. Okay, well, that's nice and simple. And I'm going to color these two digits. Let's use blue and green, okay? And we know that blue is lower than green and green is lower than yellow. Okay, well, let's look at this digit. Let's just temporarily color it purple. And we know for the same logic that that is that digit. But those, um, so purple um, is lower than Purple is or purple is lower than that digit and lower than that digit. So this is effectively a set of the three digits. So this digit is lower than that digit and lower than that digit. And this is a set of the three digits because this digit is lower than that digit and lower than that digit. So if purple is the lowest of the three digits, purple must be blue because these are three different digits on the diagonal and these are three different digits on the diagonal. So this must be purple, this must be green, this must be yellow, this must be blue, and that means this must be green. And you get this colouring right at the start. But if you don't think about the thermos the right way, you won't get that. And we can do the same kind of along here. So let's use different coloring. Let's use purple, orange, and red, okay? These are three different digits because they are th on a thermo. So they must be three different digits. So, now we know that must be purple because purple um, can't, re purple, uh, this digit must be one of those three, but it can't repeat. Now we go down here. We know that these are three digits in order and these are three different digits in order. So this must be purple, this must be orange, and this must be red. 
Now, can we associate these into here? Not really because of the way this is slid down, but we know that this is true. So now we might want to do some pencil marking on the thermos and see what's restricted. Because um, I think this is as far as I can go. I might be able to take it further. But we know green actually has to be one of these. I might be able to take it further, actually. Because green is one of these. But green isn't orange or purple. Because green has to be on this diagonal. But green can't be that one, and green can't be that one. So green is red. So we can change red to green. And now we've just got to assign orange and purple. So we know this is orange now. And we've got these colorings. And now we've got the coloring of each of the um, of each of the diagonals. And now we can start using the thermos. And you can get that coloring right at the beginning by just thinking about the way the thermos work. But each of the, and this was my original design concept, but every one of the testers didn't actually go for this. So now let's look. This is a maximum of eight because it can't be nine. This is a maximum of seven. Whoops, I've gone to the wrong mode. Maximum seven, maximum six, maximum five maximum four. So I'm actually going to pencil mark these. Uh, one, two, three, four, I think it's possible. Two, three, five. So because it can't be four. So this blue must be from two, three, five, but it can't be a three. So we can take three out of blue. So this green, all of these is now three, four, five, and six. Well, it's not four because green sees four. It's not three because green sees three. So green is now five or six, which means yellow has to be higher than that, but it has a maximum of six. So yellow is six or seven, and it can't be six. And we can write yellow straight in as seven, meaning this is an eight. And you get that straight away. And if you start pens by pencil marking the thermos without actually investigating how the thermos work with anti-diagonal, you kind of get a little bit caught in the weeds. And it's, I, I really am happy with the way this puzzle worked. This is now a maximum of six. So this is a maximum of five, maximum four, maximum three. So one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five. Now, can I do any more? This can't be a three because of, of purple. So we know purple is two or four. And we know orange is two, three, five. Sorry, three, four, five, but it can't be four. So this is orange is three or five. Okay. And it can't be three. Orange is five. Which means green in all of its places is six. Okay. Five means blue is two. Doesn't this just, once you investigate those colors and understand them, this very hard puzzle looks really easy because now purple is four and we've done all of the diagonals. But if you don't start playing with those diagonals first, this puzzle gets diabolically hard. And from this point, I think this puzzle is easy. But every single tester <laughs> that tried this one had their brain melted by the concept. So this has to be one, two, or three, and it can't be two. So this is one or three. This has to be higher than six, and it can't be eight. So this is seven or nine. This has to be higher than seven, so it's eight or nine. This has to be lower than two, so it's one. This has to be lower than two, so it's one. This has to be higher than six, so it's seven or eight, because it can't be nine. That's basically the constraints done, and now we play with Sudoku. One can't be in any of those. This becomes a one. Um, I hope that you find that break in as interesting as I did. Um, so one, two, three is in one of those two, four, five, six. These are three, eight, and nine. Well, the eight goes there and this becomes a three, nine pair. And the three here resolves that as the nine. And that is the three taking three out of there. One and one takes one out of all of those. So that becomes the one. 
The one looks down, making that the three. Okay. Two is not in any of those. Two is in one of those, maybe not. Three is in one of those two by Sudoku. What is this triple? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. There's no six there. So six is in one of those two. Ah, that six says the six isn't there. That's the six, and the five makes that the seven and that the five. Five and five means five is in one of those three, so it's there because none of those can be five. That puts five in one of those two. What is this triple? Two, three, five? Well, there's no three in either of those, so that's the three, and the five looks across making that the two and that the five. Two and two means two is in one of those two. This triple, one, two, three, four, and nine. There's no four in any of those, so that's the four. This is a three, nine pair. So one, two, these are two, seven, and eight. So seven is in one of the, ah, the seven. That's the seven, and this is a two, eight pair now. So we know what this pair is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, and nine. The five is looking up, making that the nine and that the five. The nine is looking down, making that the seven. These are three and eight, and the three is looking up, making that the eight and that the three. This is a triple. One, two, three, four, six, and eight. The four comes out of there. The six and the eight makes that the four, and that's resolved. And then the eight looks across, making that six and that the eight. Where to look? What's the best place to look now? This triple, maybe? One, four, and seven. The seven comes out of there. The four comes out of there. So there is a four in one of those two. Oh, the seven comes out of there. That's a one, four. So this is a seven. Need to put a one in here. It's in one of those two. Two is somewhere. Five is in one of those two. Nine, not sure. Okay. Okay, what about, yeah, what about these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are two and nine, and the two looks across making that the nine and that the two. So one, two, three, these are four and seven, and the seven looks across making that the four and that the seven. So in this row, we haven't placed an eight or a nine, so that's an eight or a nine, and the eight looks down making that the nine and that the eight. So this is now a triple. One, two, I've got a three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, and eight. The eight says that the eight's not there. This eight says the eight's not there. That's the eight. And then the two looks across, making that the one and that the two. As you can see, this has got really nice flow. The trick is the way these thermos resolve. And as I said, no one found it obvious. One comes out of there, making that a one by pencil mark, making that a five by pencil mark. These are now two and nine for either the row uh, column or the box. The one looks across making that the two, which means that's the nine and that's the two. This row needs a five and I can't put it there. So this is the five and this row needs a six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, three, seven, and nine. The seven comes out of both of those two. So that's the seven. This is a three, nine, giving me a three, nine pair. Is that doing it? No, but the eight looking up, making that the two and that the eight. So now I've got a three, nine. So I've got, I'm missing a one and a four because I've got two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a one or a four. And the one is looking across, making that the four, that the three. The four looks up, making that the one and that the four. The three looks up, making that the nine and that the three, looking up, making that the nine and that the three. And these are one and nine. And I'll use the one to make that the nine and that the one. Now, you may look at this and go, oh my Lord, this is a really short puzzle because you solved it in 12 minutes. That thermo break-in, as I said, confused a lot of the testers, but it's kind of obvious for, I, I thought it was, I thought it was elegant. The reason this has been put so late in the pack is because of the fact that it wasn't seen so quickly. Now, I'm not calling my testers dumb. It's a kind of new way of thinking about anti-diagonal. Well, it's not new, but it they just not seen it before. And hopefully you haven't either. Um, and now that you have, 
maybe it'll be fun for you. The whole point of me making these and me focusing on a single constraint like this is I want to explore different things that I find. That's why I enjoy making these like 10 to 12 puzzles in a single constraint is because I learn new things about that constraint. And that's what I'm trying to share with you. New little twists and turns about the interactions. And it's why I like focusing on single constraints most of the time when I do it. When I'm adding something to anti-diagonal, I don't want to add crop key and XV and thermos and cages because then you're not learning about the interactions of what one constraint can do with the anti-diagonal in this case. Because it's when you hyper-focus on something that you can go, ooh, this does something really cool um, because you just get bogged down in trying to include everything and it's why I think given digits are so amazing because then you can hyper focus and use those given digits to just give the the puzzle the push it needs to make something like this work because this is all about those thermos and what, the way they bounce off those anti-diagonals and I'd be really curious for someone who doesn't find that trick um, doesn't actually notice that the way that those colors can be put in right at the start, how you go on this puzzle. Thanks everyone for watching. I really hope you're enjoying the series and as always, good luck with your solving.